Hello everyone, it's Jabari here. Welcome to episode 3 of Misconceptions. There is a popular and ignorant topic that gets tossed around frequently claiming that sub-Saharan Africans never developed the wheel, paper, or writing. Well, you know what? For the most part, that's true, actually. <laughs> I knew it! Finally you admit it! Yeah, I mean, it is true but it's also true for Europe and Asia, and frankly, most of the human population as well. That's bullshit. The white man had all them things. The only thing Negroes had were cow sh hoods. Yeah, yeah, I know, you are correct. Minus the part about the huts. However, there is a very big difference between having something and independently developing something. Let's start with the wheel, for example. The wheel is popularly portrayed as some sort of primitive caveman technology that is comparable in simplicity to fire, stone tools, or shelter, and should have been very easily accomplished by African people. This notion is simply untrue for a few reasons. Reason number one being that fire, stone tools, and shelter predate modern human existence, with the archaeological record showing that earlier hominids had all of these things prior to modern Homo sapiens and wheels were not one of them, with evidence suggesting that fire may have been first produced by an earlier hominid species between 1 million and 300,000 years ago, and the earliest stone tool use was recorded to be up to 3 million years ago. Reason number two being that wheel use was something almost exclusive to Eurasian peoples, and was missing in nearly all other human populations of the world until the modern era. It was only independently developed for utilitarian purposes once or twice, and very recently in the human timeline, with the oldest confirmed free-spinning wheel to date being discovered in a Martian Slovenia and being radiocarbon dated to around 3200 BCE. However, wheel technology likely spread to Europe and East Asia through the Middle East, seeing as the wheel appeared in Mesopotamian artwork much earlier, with the oldest artistic depictions of wheels dating back to as early as 4000 BCE and was most likely adapted from the potter's wheel. The oldest surviving remains of wheels in the region date to a similar period of the one discovered in Slovenia. This was the time when the Neolithic Revolution took place, and wide use of domestic animals began to take hold. The wheel was never independently developed anywhere in the world outside of Eurasia for utilitarian purposes. Similar to other big innovations such as farming, domestication, and metallurgy, wheel use was most likely developed by a small group of people and spread through trade, warfare, and migrations of peoples throughout Eurasia and North Africa. Sub-Saharan Africa was relatively isolated from Eurasia by deserts and seas, which slowed the progress of such technology spreading throughout the African continent, with Ethiopians and Somalians being the only Sub-Saharan Africans to adopt it on a massive scale. The wheel was a very specialized type of device that was only ever widely used and adopted in Europe and Asia. Thus, it is unfair to point fingers at Africa specifically when no other part of the world adopted the technology on such a scale. Only Eurasians. Some people in other parts of the world demonstrated clear capabilities to create wheels such as the peoples of Mesoamerica, as evidenced by wheeled clay figurines created as children's toys, but they were not used for anything else. Wheeled devices could be found in some parts of Sub-Saharan Africa as well, such as this wheeled lockbox created in the Ashanti Empire. Even in Europe and Asia, wheel use was neglected or ignored in some regions, despite knowledge of it. Peoples of the Middle East and North Africa all but abandoned the wheel between the years of 500 and 100 BCE. According to American professor Richard Bulliet, this abandonment is attributed to the invention of the camel saddle and the collapse of the Roman Empire, which led to the decline of road construction or maintenance. The camel became a much more reliable means of transportation, allowing for more versatility when trekking across the rough terrain and deserts. Despite this, the wheel remained largely in use for purposes other than transportation, such as the potter's wheel and for irrigation. Sub-Saharan Africans generally lacked wheel devices due to an indigenous insect known as the tsetse fly, which carries a disease that is deadly to horses. The tsetse fly severely limited the spread of the horses, and thus the spread of wheel technology 
hindering its gradual evolution to devices such as wheelbarrows, potter's wheels, and ultimately, more sophisticated wheel devices such as water wheels and windmills. Writing systems are another innovation that sub-Saharan African cultures are criticized for lacking. The majority of Africa south of the Sahara lacked any form of written language, with few exceptions such as the E script of Ethiopia and NCDB of Nigeria. Several West African and East African cultures adopted Arabic writing after contact with Islamic peoples in the past few centuries. However, like the wheel, writing systems of Eurasia were only developed independently in perhaps two or three places such as China and Mesopotamia, with the latter likely adapting theirs from Egyptian hieroglyphs. From these epicenters, it was spread, adopted, and adapted to local languages where it gradually evolved into other unique symbols and scripts that better catered to unique languages. With Sub-Saharan Africa being relatively isolated, written languages only recently began to spread there after contact with the Islamic world. A similar pattern can be found in East Asia, with the Japanese adopting kanji from the Chinese, and Korea using Chinese characters throughout the bulk of their history, only creating an indigenous script known as Hangul as recently as the year 1443 by Sejong the Great. Japan was virtually an illiterate society until the 5th century, when Korean scholars introduced Chinese writing characters to them. Even in the modern day, Chinese characters are still used alongside these scripts in both Korea and Japan. A lesser known fact is that our modern day easy to use number system of 0 through 9 is known as the Arabic numeral system. It was created by Arabic peoples who in turn adapted it from a system that originally came from India. Gunpowder and paper spread throughout Europe and Asia by way of invasions and conquest by Central Asian nomads such as the Mongols, who acquired the technology from the Chinese. Peaceful trade and migrations were also responsible for spread of ideas, such in the case with the Egyptians who invented papyrus, in which the modern word for paper derives from. Sub-Saharan Africans simply did not experience the same level of interaction and trade being restricted to relatively small desert caravans that traveled the Sahara, which was the size of the United States which naturally severely hindered major exchange of ideas from Eurasia. This is evident in the fact that sub-Saharan African nations such as Kush, Ethiopia, and the kingdoms of the Horn of Africa were consistently more technologically advanced than much of Africa, rivaling Eurasian civilizations due to the fact that they had been consistently tied into a greater network of trade with the Old World for millennia. Despite this relative isolation and thus technological inferiority, Sub-Saharan Africans still produced thriving and impressive civilizations. So next time you think of something that wasn't invented or developed by Sub-Saharan Africans, be sure to remind yourself of all the things that had their origins elsewhere. These developments largely spread throughout the Eurasian supercontinent through trade, warfare, and migrations, while Sub-Saharan Africa only experienced a small level of this interaction throughout its history, until the past few centuries. There was no innate intuition or intelligence in other regions that drove these people to create new things on their own. Trade and exchange of ideas is what led to the technological innovations of these peoples as a whole. And the same would have very well happened in Africa had there been no geographical barriers preventing it. Stay tuned for part four. If you enjoyed the video and you want to make a request of your own, you can do so by supporting my channel and becoming a patron. The link to this can be found below. On my Patreon, you can also gain free and public access to all the sources used in my videos. I'll see you guys next time, and always remember, we don't come from nothing.